Tonight, economic slowdown. Canada, the country's housing agency, is calling attention to a potential storm of another kind. Growth in Canada's economy is slowing down. Crunching the numbers ahead of a key decision by the central bank. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the Great White North? Not the White Walkers, of course. Then what exactly because the bomb is ticking and a storm has been brewing, threatening to shatter the very economic pillars that uphold this nation of Canada. As jobs vanish, dreams waver, and prosperity hangs in the balance, we're uncovering the profound why that underpins it all. You know, Canada is known for its polite citizens, majestic landscapes, and uh, the excessive use of the word sorry. But when it comes to humor, it seems the economy wants to join the entertainment scene too. So let's debunk some myths, shall we? History, rise of the Canadian economy. There's a lot more to Canada's history other than maple syrup and ice hockey. Canada's economic history is a captivating journey through time marked by diverse phases of growth and transformation. From its indigenous trading networks that thrived on fur and pelts to the colonial influences that shaped its resource-based economy, Canada's economic landscape has evolved dramatically just like in the movies. The late 19th century witnessed the emergence of a budding industrial sector fueled by the construction of railways and the rise of manufacturing. However, it was the 20th century that truly showcased Canada's economic prowess with its vast natural resources driving growth and industries like forestry, mining, and energy taking center stage. The discovery of oil, the establishment of the social welfare system, and international trade agreements further propelled Canada's economic expansion. But with time, the bubble of Canada's economy is about to burst and SpongeBob is not going to be happy as with these tough times, it won't be something to be proud of. So what is causing the downfall of one of the fastest growing economies? Let's look into it. COVID-19 impact. First in the list of what the moose is happening is none other than our special guest star, COVID-19. It's like that unexpected guest who arrives at a party and suddenly starts rearranging the furniture. Our economy got the COVID-19 makeover complete with social distancing from profits. But fear not, we are resourceful. We're using hand sanitizer to clean our stock portfolios and toilet paper to wipe away our economic tears because COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant negative impact on Canada's economy resulting in a historic contraction of 5.4% in 2020 and a minor rebound of 5.7 in 2021. The recovery has been uneven and shaky, though, since new virus types and public health initiatives have continued to have an impact on the economy and consumer confidence. Statistics Canada's most recent data show that the Canadian economy expanded by 3.1% in the first quarter of this year exceeding the 2.5% forecast. However, this rise was mostly fueled by a recovery in business investment and exports, with family consumption remaining muted. Additionally, as a result of the third wave of COVID-19 cases and lockdowns, the GDP shrank by 0.2% in April. Rising inflation. First of all, let's break this down. The economy's so bad, people are trading their hockey sticks for calculators. Who knew Zambonis would become the new currency? The outlook for the rest of this year and 2024 is bleak as Canada faces several headwinds that could dampen its growth prospects. Inflation, which has been steadily increasing since mid-2021 and hit a 30-year high of 4.7% in December, is one of the major problems. Higher energy costs, supply chain disruptions, a lack of labor, and a high demand for some goods and services have been the main causes of inflation. Canadians' purchasing power has decreased as a result of inflation, especially those with low and modest earnings who spend a bigger percentage of their income on necessities like food and accommodation. Cost of oil have also increased as well. They can't just put maple syrup in their cars in place of the fuel, can they? In a recent Angus Reid Institute survey, 71% of Canadians reported feeling the effects of inflation and 42% reported having trouble affording necessities of life. But fear not, because we've got a plan. We're going to save the economy with, wait for it, poutine power. Yep, cheesy curds and gravy will become the new global currency. World leaders will be negotiating trade deals over a plate of crispy fries. Rising interest rates. Another issue is the rising cost of borrowing for both families and businesses as a result of rising interest rates. These rates are taking quite an interest these days in ruining our lives. Since October 2022, the Bank of Canada has increased its benchmark interest rate three times, 
from 0.25% to 1% in response to rising inflationary pressures and a robust labor market rebound. As it anticipates inflation to remain over its objective of 2% until late 2024, the bank has indicated it will continue to gradually tighten its monetary policy over the next two years. As investors altered their expectations and portfolios in response to higher interest rates, this also increased market volatility. Canadian exports are now less competitive as a result of the Canadian dollar's appreciation against the majority of major currencies. Sharp fluctuations in the stock market have occurred as certain industries have profited from increased interest rates while others have been negatively impacted by declining profitability and valuations. Global Economic Slowdown Oh, and did I mention the global economic slowdown? It's like we're all part of an unwanted international sloth race. Just when you thought sloths were slow, they're now dawdling their way through stock exchanges. The slowdown in the global economy which has decreased demand for Canadian exports and commodities is a fourth issue. After expanding by 5.9% in 2021, the world economy is projected to expand by 3.9% this year and 3.6% in 2024. The pandemic's lingering impacts, restrictive monetary policy in many nations, geopolitical tensions between key powers, and environmental threats including climate change and natural disasters are the main causes of this slowdown. These elements have had an impact on Canada's trading performance as have some particular problems including trade restrictions, traffic jams, and labor disputes. Canada's merchandise trade surplus decreased from $6.4 billion in November to $3.6 billion in December, according to Statistics Canada. Exports decreased by 2.8% primarily as a result of decreased exports of consumer goods, motor vehicles, and parts. Increased purchases of industrial machinery and equipment, electronic and electrical equipment, and airplanes and other transportation equipment were the main drivers of the 0.9% increase in imports. Structural Weaknesses Imagine there is a guy hitting up on you in your DMs and you want to get rid of him and you and your group have already counted all the flaws needed to reject this guy. Likewise, the structural flaws in the Canadian economy, which have long limited its competitiveness and productivity, are the fifth issue. Low levels of economic innovation and investment, significant obstacles to trade and labor mobility, skill mismatches and workforce shortages, deteriorating infrastructure and public services, geographical inequities, and social inequality are a few of these. These flaws have been highlighted by the epidemic during which some regions and industries have shown greater resilience than others while certain populations and communities have shown greater vulnerability. For example, the public health policies have had a greater impact on the service industry than the one that produces goods. Compared to other provinces, the energy producing provinces have seen lower oil prices and pipeline delays. Women, young people, people of color, Native Americans, immigrants, people with disabilities, and low-wage employees have seen higher rates of unemployment and income losses than other groups. Housing market crash Turns out the house market crash is real. Houses are falling faster than a hockey puck in overtime. But don't worry, I've got my bathrobe on standby just in case my cardboard mansion decides to join the party. For the past 10 years, Canada's housing market has been among the hottest in the world. Yeah, hotter than your crush, driven by speculative demand, high immigration, cheap mortgage rates, and limited supply. In June this year, the average home price in Canada was $709,218, up 7% from the previous year, but down 3% from the month before. The market's significant regional variances are concealed by this national average. Prices have increased past $1 million in some regions, such as Vancouver and Toronto, while they have decreased or remained the same in other areas, such as Edmonton and Regina. The housing market meltdown is anticipated to continue this year as supply grows and demand is suppressed by rising interest rates, declining incomes, and decreased affordability. You see, the real estate game has turned into a gigantic game of Jenga. And just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, they introduced the extreme makeover mortgage edition. The housing market crash has made Canada's homelessness situation worse because many people have been forced out of their homes and are without a place to stay. Over 300,000 people are homeless in Canada right now, up 25% from 2021, according to Statistics Canada. As a result of many people being priced out of the housing market and lacking access to suitable and affordable housing, 
The housing bubble burst has caused a housing affordability gap in Canada. The number of households spending more than 30% of their income on housing climbed from 40% in 2021 to 45% in this year above the affordability barrier, according to the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, or CMHC. But fear not, fellow Maple Leafs, because we're going to solve this housing crisis with a pinch of humor and a sprinkle of syrup. Our solution? Tiny pancake houses. They're affordable, stackable, and they come with a side of delicious maple syrup insulation. Government Initiatives Government Initiatives to Save the Day Ah yes, because when in doubt, just throw some maple syrup at it and hope for the best, eh? Just kidding. The federal government of Canada has implemented a number of policies to assist the Canadian economy and deal with its long-term problems in light of these difficulties. The government unveiled their budget in March this year titled A Made in Canada Plan, Strong Middle Class, Affordable Economy, Healthy Future, for the fiscal years 2023 and 24. With a focus on improving public health and dental care, expanding a green economy, and making life more affordable, the budget highlighted the government's fiscal plan and policy aims for the following five years. Some of the budget's major initiatives and suggestions include a new grocery rebate will provide 11 million Canadians with low and moderate incomes and their families with $2.5 billion in targeted inflation relief. A crackdown on predatory lending, a reduction in the maximum interest rate on payday loans from 60% to 15%, and a prohibition of unfair activities by credit card firms and banks, such charging hidden fees. A five-year, $198.3 billion investment would improve Canada's public health care system, cut back on wait times, increase access to family health services, and ensure that provinces and territories can deliver timely, high-quality health care. But not everyone concurs with the government's analysis and strategy. The administration, according to some opponents, is spending money too quickly and excessively without having a clear strategy in place to balance the budget or pay down the debt. Now, to address the collapsing part of our title, it's important to note that things might not be as dire as they sound. The economy might be wobbling like a moose on roller skates, but hey, they've survived winters that would make a polar bear shiver. Although the government has made some progress towards addressing the economy's long-term problems and providing some economic support, there is still opportunity for improvement. Don't worry, we will get to see ice hockey and your breakfast won't be incomplete. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you like this video. See you again soon.